What's good, YouTube? MMB back out again on another reaction video. And this one, we got a very, very interesting one. How does music affect your brain? Now, you think about that. Comment, let me know what you think. I say music affects your brain because it, it goes based off your mood. When I'm happy, I listen to happy music. When I'm turned, I listen to turn music. When I'm on that drill, I listen to drill music. You feel me? So, me personally, I think music plays a very big part in your emotions, bro, and how you think. But, Mary Spender, feel me, found this on YouTube, and I was thinking about it. This is gonna be an interesting video. They I love this, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button, man. Subscribe to the channel. We can share it to it, homie. Why does this? Make you feel different to this. Why does this generate a different emotional response to this? If you're watching my channel, it's highly likely that you're a musician or a music lover. But what you we might not know lovers, are some of the fascinating only. ways that music works on the human brain and the amazing benefits it can bring. Psychology is the scientific study of mind and behavior. When applied to music, it's about the study of music as a product of the human mind. Music psychologists ask questions like what it means to be musical and why music makes people feel certain things like emotions or a desire to dance. Before we carry on, please do hit that subscribe button. Scott it really China. helps me out. Music has existed Scott in some China. shape or form for as long as humans have. Because music occurs in all cultures, it's been theorized that its origins may be biological, that it's something innate within us. But when we take into consideration the diversity of music around the world, for instance, the difference between traditional Eastern and Western music, then we have to factor in the importance of cultural factors too. So where does it come from? What we do know is that it's something that is with us from the very first moments of our life. Studies show that newborn babies are sensitive to intonational melody, rhythm, and the dynamics of the noise in their surroundings. And despite the diversity of music in different cultures, one genre is similar all over, the lullaby. In cultures all over the world, lullabies use the same features, a higher pitch level, a slower pace, and a warmer vocal tone. Hey, if I can come back from this on the I'm Incredibly, lullabies recorded by a parent in the presence of an infant entrance babies more successfully than lullabies recorded in the absence of one, which suggests that certain vocal qualities emerge subconsciously when parents interact with their infants. Data also shows that babies treated in neonatal intensive care units with background music eat more food, cry less, sleep better, and require fewer days in the hospital than babies in units without. Music has other incredible health benefits too. More on that later. First, we need to look at how the brain processes the information. No one area oh, of the brain crazy. is solely responsible for our love of music. Our ability to hear and appreciate it comes from a complex interplay of networks spread throughout the brain. These networks are also used by other activities like speech and movement. In fact, musical training has been shown to enhance abilities like learning a second language, literacy, executive function, and emotional processing. When you listen to music, here's what happens. Vibration in your eardrums displaces tiny bones behind them. This perturbs the fluid of your inner ear, moving tiny hair cells, which then send electrical signals up your auditory nerve. The signal is refined and combined with other information from your ears and other senses like your vision before it reaches the cortex, a folded outer layer of your brain that's responsible for awareness, thought and perception. Okay, no, Rhythm so has been shown to activate a host of brain regions traditionally characterized as motor regions, the supplementary motor area, premotor cortex, cerebellum and the basal ganglia. 
your motor cortex, which is responsible for the planning and execution of movements, is activated by music, even when you're sitting still, which is why you might find yourself subconsciously tapping your foot along to a beat or drumming your fingers without being fully aware of doing so. The sound of music triggers reward circuitry in your brain, including the, wait for it, ventral striatum, orbital frontal cortex, and ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Dopamine, the chemical which plays a key role in the brain's reward system, releases not only during the most intensely pleasurable moment of a song, like an epic solo, no, no, no. but also in the moments leading up to it. By manipulating and building rhythm, harmony and melody, musicians can create a sense of anticipation that's hugely exciting and makes crowds do this. It's not just the sense of pleasure that comes from listening to a good tune. Music can have lots of profound effects on our health too. For all of us, relaxing music can lower blood pressure and slow our pulse. When people listen to music they enjoy, their pain tolerance also improves, measured through experiments like how long people are willing to keep their hand in freezing cold water. And because of the overlap of the neural circuitry devoted to music and motor control, the act of listening to music can help people with serious movement disorders. I don't got no pain Parkinson's man. is a degenerative disorder that affects cells in deep parts of the brain, including the basal ganglia. Because the basal ganglia also serves as the center of anticipatory processing for beat-based music, i.e. EDM, when people with Parkinson's listen to rhythmic music, their movement can show some noticeable improvements. Speech processing too can be aided by music. People who experience brain damage because of stroke or traumatic injury can suffer a condition called non-fluent aphasia, where their ability to comprehend language is preserved, but the ability to speak is lost. Melodic intonation therapy, MIT, uses the musical aspects mm. of speech to encourage language development within undamaged regions in the right hemisphere of the brain. People who can't produce individual words are instead taught to sing them, and gradually to transition to speaking them without the musical emphasis. I spoke with my friend Aubrey Robinson about her recovery experience after surviving a bike accident and sustaining a traumatic brain injury, and she shared this story. When I had my accident, mm. so it wasn't, gosh, until the second hospital, so it was a month and a half at least, or maybe it was two months, into my recovery process that... um my speech therapist and other doctors were trying to get me to speak properly and I didn't have inflection in my voice. And so they tried all sorts of things. But it wasn't until my sister's birthday and I called and sang happy birthday to her that they were like, wow, you use intonation. And it was just, I guess, birthday song everybody knows happy birthday but then after that moment they made me go and play the piano every day and sing everything it uh picked up drastically from there massive thanks to aubrey for helping out with this video Patients benefit from a strengthened breathing and vocal ability, improved articulation of speech and increased verbal and non-verbal communicative behaviors because music affects multiple areas of the brain, musical memories can survive even when degenerative conditions like dementia have damaged memory systems. Numerous clinical observations suggest that dementia patients can remember and enjoy the music of their youth, even when in advanced stages of the disease. In 2020, footage of Marta Sinta Gonzalez Saldana, an ex-ballerina who suffered from Parkinson's, showed the incredible effect that music had on her memory. When we are moved by music, a whole host of fascinating processes are happening in our brain. But our responses aren't just from neurons firing. It's memories That's too. Crazy. Memories of the song that you had your first kiss to, or that helped you through a breakup, or reminders of time spent with your father or grandmother. 
we bring with us a lifetime's worth of memories and experiences that color how we Hold feel when black. we listen. The same song can mean many different things to many see. different people. Something referred to as floating intentionality by Dr. Ian Cross at Cambridge University. The sense that this piece of music is about something deeply meaningful. Music connects us, makes us feel part of something much bigger than ourselves. It's what makes it such a fascinating and enduring part of being human. I really appreciate you watching till the end. I know it's a cliche, but if you aren't yet subscribed, it would be amazing if you could click that button. It's totally free and really helps me out. Really Another thing that's free yeah. is signing up to my newsletter. Check out the link in the description really? below. Then if you're feeling super generous, check out my online courses and my Patreon page as they're how I support this channel. Hey. As always, hey, I'll now be me out. You know the rest of that, hey, some promo, but hey man, shout out to Marish. Spender, feel me? That was a good, interesting video. That didn't taught me a lot of stuff. Like, that's true. Cause like, if I if I play like a NBA Young Boy or a Quiet Black song, a old song, bro, it's gonna be back memories when I was first listening to that song. That's how I think about all my music. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know we all think about that. I know you be listening to Rod right Wave. Don't cap. <laughs> I don't listen to Rod right Wave, but don't get me wrong here, bro. Five, whatever. I just don't listen to him. Nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of people don't listen to me anyway. There's a lot of people don't listen to Cordell Black. But, hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace!